to make your presentation wow with Canva, you can amaze the crowd. Want to brainstorm? Put your pencils down. Online whiteboards, ideas all around. Woo! Coming in hot with a Canva doc. Docs and decks, I like it a lot. Design a website quick in minutes. Canva videos too, one stop shop. You can design with ease, print with free delivery. Make your work feel like a breeze. Beautiful templates, yes please. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can get the job done, play and have fun. What you design today at Canva.com. The next session will begin in 20 seconds. Welcome to the last <laughs> session of day six week of AI. I'm like, I'm in love with that Canva video. Like just the music and I, everything. Oh, I love it. Um, so we have a fantastic last presenter. Um, yeah, Christina Holtzweiss, she's amazing. Um, she is a, uh, she's got the Canva librarians group. She wrote Hacking School Discipline. I'm giving her bio here. Um, but we have a formal one that I could probably read from to give you a little bit uh, better overview of who she is and the magic behind what she does. And she's going to be presenting today on um, six ways to get students started with AI. Which is so perfect. She's going to lead you out of this party with something to do right away and every time i watch her present i'm like taking notes like crazy she's plus she's a fantastic person too we really bonded at isti and i just love this woman we have a lot in common she fits right in with us amanda so she does um, and she's got she's got library planners that are out she's a prolific kids book author uh educational author um she's going to be at isti this year so i can't wait to connect so if you see us in the wild Come up, tap us, hug us, tackle us, say hi. Just don't, no karate chops, please. Um, <laughs> I've been karate chopped. I <laughs> karate chopped by somebody. Yes. Scott Noons. We were like, oh, no, Scott, yes. you're so funny. No, Scott didn't do that. But no, I have been, I have been karate chopped and tackled down. All right, Christina Holtzweiss, M-L-I-S-M-A, is an ed tech librarian on Long Island, or from Long Island, New York. She began her career in the classroom in 1995. She was named the school library, the school library journal librarian of the year in 2015, a library journal mover and shaker and a national school board 20 to watch emerging education technology leader. She is also the winner of the NYSCATE, the Enscape uh, Lee Bryant Outstanding Teacher Award and Long Island Technology Summit, Fred Podoisky uh, Leadership and Innovation Award. So it's just Tons of accolades, tons of books, a wealth of knowledge and resources. Let's go ahead and bring her up. Yay. Hi. Yay. Yay. So we've got three canvassadors in, in, in the same yes. street. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Um, it's our Canva day. Again, thank you to Canva for sponsoring Friday, our last day of the week of AI. And don't forget, Tuesday, we have Tisha Richmond and Elizabeth Boswick with some more Canva AI Encore streaming going on. Awesome. Just amazing. Happy Hello. Friday. Happy Friday. Yeah, happy yes. Friday. My, my Friday night with you ladies. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yes, Friday. dance party. Hold on. Do we have to? Can we just keep going? Yeah, right. <laughs> Doing the right here. Uh, uh, Lena says she's excited to see you present. Um, uh, Tonka says human capital development professionals of Nepal. Uh, Muhammad saying hi, good. Um, let's see, a ASAP Sunday Society. So we've got some people from around the world in the house ready to watch you, uh, you know, break it down, some AI style. So are you ready? I'm ready. You was born <laughs> ready. I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. We're going to queue up your sides. All right. All right. So 
Um, I actually had the privilege this year to be a uh, part of the ISTE cohort for AI. Um, I had taken the course by myself a few years ago, and then this year I was able to get a cohort of librarians and staff developers, and there were uh, a bunch of us uh, smart, strong, beautiful, powerful women uh, learning about AI. And some of these websites I got from that course and some of the things I just learned along the way. So I just think about like, how do you introduce AI to kids? And everyone's like, oh my God, AI, spooky, spooky. You know, it's like, you know, the robots are coming to get us. But you know, we, oh, I, God, I, yeah, I love that when people, the teachers oh, no. are like, we have to stop AI. And I'm like, it's already here. <laughs> it's already yeah. here. So, we got to teach it. Exactly. Oh, and like, okay. do you have Siri? Do you have, you know, Alexa? Right. They're like, yeah, Michael, then you have it. <laughs> So here are some ways that you can introduce it to kids um, and of all ages. So we're talking about artificial intelligence and we're going to pop down and give you the show. All right. You got it. All right. Um, so talk about artificial intelligence and it's not like, you know, robots are taking over. It's not I robot. It's talking about like how machines quote unquote learn after a while. And you know, we learn after our experiences. We learn from our prior knowledge and we learn from uh, the experiences we have, uh, everyday experiences in the classroom. So computers just do it artificially. They have, um, they've learned through machine learning and algorithms and it's basically repetition, repetition. They're just very, very, very efficient at it and very quick at it. So here's a definition of artificial intelligence uh, and designing algorithms and systems that can learn from data and adapt to new situations. So again, like people, we adapt to new situations. We're again, like, not like computers, we're not as quick. So that's a little definition for AI for you. So here are some of the websites. And so, like I said, some of them were from the ISTE cohort and some we just learned by um, my friends and I just by exploring. So the first one is which face is real. That's a really fun way to get into learning about AI and all those things about like, you know, uh, fake news, um, fake stories. And basically on this website, uh, people have to determine which of the pictures is actually real. Now, if you've seen the ad for this, for this, for my session, you can see that that is not really me, although I love it to be me. It's not really me. And that was created by AI. So, but it had to learn from a number of pictures already. It didn't just magically appear at that picture. So this one, which face is real? Let's click that and it shows you, wow, oh, that this is an interesting one. You have to click the person where you think the person is real. So you'll find that um, AI sometimes is not so good with um, eyes. It may not be good for like uh, jewelry and earrings may not be the same. It may blur out some things. Um, uh, I had an AI, some AI pictures done and I had three arms in one of them. So again, it's not perfect. So when you look at both of these and you start thinking, well, what can I say might be the giveaways on, you know, which, it, which is, which face is real, but I wouldn't do that with the kids. I would let the kids explore on their own first and let them come to the conclusion. So I know that well, I'm assuming that this one is not real because we have this little bit right here glasses covering the eyes, kind of blurry background. I'm going to say that this little girl is real. This little girl is real. Let's play again. So this one, again, click the person who's real. Again, we see a blurry background. Um, the skin is even toned, right? This one has uh, a lot more accessories. I'm going to say that this one is real. And again, it's saying it's correct. So again, you might want to use this with your students and have them guess which one is real. Now, this one's a little bit of a tough one. They both have a kind of a blurry background. Uh, this one has the glasses on. This one, you have like a like this little blurriness right here. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Which one do we think is real? And on this one, I'm going to say this one's real. Let's see if I'm right. I'm wrong. 
This one is the real one. So again, the blurry background is, is not always a tell all, but you can tell sometimes a little bit of the shine is not quite right as a little bit of a shine here. Explore it with your students. They'll get a kick out of it. Which one is, which, which face is real. It's a really fun website. And again, it tells you about um, AI faces and natural faces. And it has a little bit of information here if you wanna dive deeper with your older kids. But this might be great, you know, when the kids are coming in uh, for a do now or maybe an art class, which face is real? So that's the first website. Uh, the second one is called Interplay Mode. Oh, I just love this website. So when you click here, Interplay Mode, you actually learn how to write in Japanese by watching a YouTube video and by using this little whiteboard. So I'll show you how it works. So it shows you how to do it. All right, it's very clear. Now it's gonna be my turn. So I'm going to write tree in Japanese. I'm gonna go like this. Go like this, I'm using my mouse. If you have a touch screen, you could probably use your finger. Go like this, press submit, and I got it correct. I was pretty close. Again, a really good way of how to write in another language. Well, this one's gonna be tougher. Let's try this one. I'll go like this, like this, over here. Now let's see how close I can get. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. It may be off a little bit, but again, you can really have a lot of fun with kids showing them how the AI works. I'm literally using YouTube and, well, oh my God, it's getting harder. Uh, I'm gonna, oh my gosh, I'm gonna try. My turn, I'm gonna try it. I love this website because it's interactive and teaches the kids something they probably not don't know. Wow, this one's really tough. I don't know if I'm gonna get this one right. Okay, not so bad. All right, they actually have it in Hebrew and they actually have it in a spelling also. So I really love this website. Uh, it's a, actually an experiment and it's called Inter Interplay Mode. Another fun, easy one. And again, these websites, you don't really need a login. So they're safe to go in. The kids can just play around and learn about AI in a fun, interactive way. Oh my gosh, if you've never seen animated drawings, it is amazing. So in this one, you actually upload your own drawing and you make it move. So the AI goes through the pictures and it, it actually makes it move. And uh, they do ask that you don't put any identifying marks. So you don't put your name on your paper. You don't put where you live only because it is um, gathering data. Uh, so it, so they, they, you don't have to log in, but they don't want any data, uh, any of the students privacy to be um, compromised. So it says here, upload a drawing. So here there are, there are um, ones here. So I'm going to actually try this one. All right, this one here. And then it says resize the box to ensure it that it tightly fits into the character. So this one is already resized. It's just fine. Oh my God, this would be so much fun for you to upload your children's artwork. Oh my gosh. Mother's, dad, you know, Father's Day is coming. Mother's Day just passed. So now it says separating the characters. So make sure there are bar body parts, right? You need body parts to move. And if they're stuck together, make sure they're se separated. And they are. And you have the different tools here that you can erase and you, you can draw. Go press next. And now you have to make sure you're putting in those joints so it can move. Here is your example. And again, it already has the joints in here. But if it didn't have the joint, you could actually move it around and you can create your own joints. They have really good examples. So if you have a picture that doesn't quite work well, you can create your own joints by just going in here and moving it around. I'll press next. And they're going to animate my, my artwork. My artwork is animated. How fun is that? And you could actually choose different uh, animations. So here are all dance animations. 
So I'll make this one dance this way. Oh, there's my dancing animation. Um, I can have a funny animation. So we'll have a funny animation. Uh, we have a jumping one. And a walking one. Your kids are going to love this. They, to actually see their artwork come alive is going to be so amazing. Look at that. The artwork walking right past. I love that. All right. So that is called uh, Animated Drawings. And it is from uh, Meta Demo Lab. All right. That's a really fun one. I love that one. Animated Drawings. Now, this one is a little more complica complicated. This is for your kids. You don't need to, to know how to code, but it, it, I would think this is for your kids who are a little older. Those other programs are fun to just jump into, but Teach a Little Machine is a little more complicated. You're actually teaching your computer to learn. You're going. It's going through the learning process. So when I click Teachable Machine, you'll see that you can train your computer. It's basically uh, if-then statements. It will choose uh, movements. It will search for images. It will search for sounds. And it will learn after a while how to sort things into it's this but not this. So you're basically giving it a bunch of images. So in that respect, it, with the little girl with a little stuffed animal had a person's face, stuffed animal, person's face, stuffed animal. And after a while, it will quote unquote learn which is which so you can sort it back and forth. So in this one, um, you press get started and you can see that you can teach it how to uh, look at images. You could teach it how to differentiate audio and how to differentiate different poses. You can open it from an existing file. You can open it from your drive, right? And I could just click this here and click this here. So you can see it's a little more compli complicated. You're going to use your webcam to take pictures or you're going to upload photos. And you're basically going to say, uh, it's basically this or that. So you're going to have, um, for sound, it would be uh, loud sounds or quiet sounds. You want something completely opposite, relaxing sounds and energetic sounds. And, and for images, you want something that is completely different. So you can have um, uh, a face, uh, a person's face, or you could have like the, the stuffed animals that you saw. Maybe you could try to differentiate between um, maybe a giraffe and an elephant. You want things that are really different. And so you upload the images and then you train the model and then you preview it and export it and then see how close you got to it. So I really love Teachable Machine because it's got a little bit of that coding in there. But again, it's kid friendly. It's safe for kids to use. And it really shows the process of how the computer, quote unquote, learns. But I would say this is for uh, maybe your upper elementary um, and you're definitely your middle school kids and your high school kids would love this, too. But I would say definitely upper elementary, your fifth and sixth graders, whereas the other other uh, tools would be for all kids. So that's Teachable Machine. Now we're going to get to the end. There's two more. There's number five is a book creator. And then we're going to end with number six, which is Canva. Now book creator has artificial intelligence built into it. And so does Canva. So I'm going to go into book creator right here. This is book creator. And if you've never seen book creator, it is amazing. Um, you can create books for your kids, uh, with your kids, for your kids, your kids can make them for you. And you can put in, you can embed different things. You could put in sound, you could put in video, you could put in images. And now I'm so excited that Book Creator also has the Canva feature because you couldn't crop before. So now you could actually crop and you can use Canva within Book Creator to design. So very excited. Um, if you've never used Book Creator before, I'm always going to stress, I stress to everyone I I, I teach about Book Creator. Always choose something from the second row. Always choose something from the second row. Um, I would avoid the first row because you have the comic layouts. The comic layouts, if you've ever done a yearbook or you've used like uh, 
scrapbooking software, it actually gives you the layouts. Whereas if you use the top row, you'll never be able to use those layouts. To so always use the bottom row. And it depends whatever size that you want. So I always use this one. Again, doesn't you don't have to be making a comic book, but definitely use the comic layouts. And I'm going to show you why. Because when you go to the plus sign right here and this little uh, red square, those are your comic layouts. If you choose something from the top row, you'll never get those layouts. You'll never get them. All right. So definitely use that, uh, the top row. So again, a quick little tutorial of Book Creator. If you've never used it before, it is fantastic. You can go in here and you can add images. Uh, you can upload images. You can take pictures with your camera, put in files, and even your Google Drive. And if I choose images right here, I could even search for images in Google. And I always give my example of my pen penguin picture. I always put penguins. Um, also, what I really love is the accessibility. So if I press this microphone, I could actually speak and say the word penguin, and it would put that in there for me. And I could speak in other languages as well. So I'm going to choose that, and I always look for my penguins. And here's my penguin, and I'm going to add the penguin. There you go. And if you want just that little guy right there, I do that, I go like this, and then I make, whoops, I make this bigger, and then I just get that little guy in that square right there. That is how I do it, and you'll never see the other parts. So that's just another quick tip for you. If you wanna move any of these boxes, you just go in here and you right click, unlock, and then you could change the shape and size of the box, and you could always delete the box. Just know that whatever is on the blue on the outside is not in your book. Think of that as your blotter, as your desk. Uh, and if you want to get rid of it, you can always get rid of it as well. So they have a lot of different features in here. You have your camera, you have your pen, you have your text, and you can record your voice. And you can add transcripts. You could put your little thought bubbles, which are fun. You could put, I mean, your speech bubbles. You could put your thought bubbles. Uh, and again, because you chose the comic version, you have your little comics in there as well. And if you ever want to alter anything, you just choose what you want, press the I, and then you can uh, give it a hyperlink. You can give, you could choose front or back. And like I said, if it was an actual image, you could actually crop it. So, okay, Chris. Loving book creator, so many fun things I could do, so simple. I use it K through 12. I use also use it in higher ed. I have my my um, the teachers in my class, I have them make digital portfolios at the end. All right, awesome. But where's the AI? All right, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to go to a new page and I'm going to show you the AI that is built into book creator. So if I go to the plus, I go to the pen. And there's my magic pen, all right? So I have regular pens here. I could just draw whatever I like. I'm not very good, um, but I can go in there. I can erase it, whatever I like. I could also use the paint can and make it all one color. And those of you who always wonder how to do the glitter background, you have to go through here to use the, get the excuse me, to get the glitter background. They have to go through the pen. I don't know why, but that's what it is. You have to fill up the page. Okay, so where is the AI? All right, I'm going to press done for now. It's going to put that little glitter. All right, and I'm going to do the next page. All right, press plus. And again, I'm going to the pen. Your AI is right here. It's your auto draw. Your auto draw. This is wonderful for kids who are not artistic, like me. Um, who ha have an image, have an idea in their head, um, but they want to actually draw it. And it's actually great for kids who have occupational therapy. It's wonderful using it during therapy and having the kids draw things and then use the AI to find the image that they wanted so they don't get frustrated. So they go through the process of drawing and then they find the, the actual picture. So what's that look like? I click the auto draw. Now I'm going to tell you, that it doesn't work for me when I draw my heart, but it's supposed to. 
It usually says my heart is a tooth or a strawberry, but maybe today we will get the heart right. Let's see what it does. Up oh, again, it always says a tooth or a strawberry. So AI is not perfect, but you can have a really great discussion with kids on how to improve their drawing so AI can learn from it um, and why certain shapes look the way they do. Really great lessons for art about uh, shapes, about how they could start drawing one, like maybe if you could draw a strawberry, maybe you can draw a tooth, but I will give you some other examples. So I'm gonna draw here, I'm gonna draw a house. Oh, see, it's already guessing what I'm drawing as I'm going like that. Now I think it's a picture frame. I'm gonna go like this. I, I draw like a little kid. Oh, there's my little house. And look, there's my house. It takes my drawing, my little drawing, and turns it into something that I could actually be proud of and put in my book. And let's see, I'm gonna put my makeup, I'm gonna try one more with a smiley face. So let's try a smiley face and let's see what it does. Smiley face, and there we go. And I have my choice of smiley face. So that is the book creator. It is the auto draw in the book creator, that feature that allows kids to learn uh, about artificial intelligence and the and the benefits of it without getting too techy, without getting too geeky on them about AI and how it works and things like that. They get to experience it. And you can do this with very, very young kids. They can be introduced very easily to AI just by this drawing. And the very last one, I'm going to leave that for now. The very last one is Canva. So we're going to talk about some of the AI features of Canva. So I'm going to go into here, into my Canva right here. And let's start with a new presentation. And I'm just going to go in here. I just want a new presentation. I want something very, very simple. Just a plain, plain screen. That's all I want. Now, it says here, magic design. Describe the presentation you want and we'll write and design a draft for you instantly. Well, yeah. I'm going to try that. So I'm going to type that in and I'm going to have a presentation about uh, the benefits of artificial intelligence. It's actually going to create a presentation for me with the kind of look that goes with those words. Look at that. It already has images. Perfect. Actually, I'm going to choose this one. And I'm going to say, create my presentation. Benefits of artificial intelligence. Look, it automatically knows that I need a picture of, of, uh, of a robot. And look, it has AI right behind it. It did this automatically. And here are the slides. Introduction to AI. It actually wrote some text for me. Applications of AI. I didn't do anything except type in those words that you saw me type in, the benefits of artificial intelligence. And it is already starting. AI in healthcare, AI in education. It has given me a place to begin my writing. Now, is it perfect? No, because I want to make it more personal, but at least I have something that I can work from. As a child, it's very difficult to look at a blank screen. We, we think of kids and we say, okay, go write something, be creative. That's a really daunting task to have that blank screen or that blank piece of paper and say, write something, be creative. And you're like, oh, I don't even know where to start. I think of this magic design in Canva, like that virtual assistant. I think this is a really great way that we can clone ourselves in the classroom and we can work with the students with the actual fleshing out the ideas, but at least the kids have worked, they, they have uh, something to start from and it really helps them to define their search terms, which as a librarian, I think is very beneficial because kids, you know, usually they go in Google and, they, and they'll type into Google, show me a picture of artificial intelligence. And they put this whole string of words and they don't need to do all that. So this is a really great lesson in uh, finding the, the exact search terms that you need. So that's the magic design by Canva. So there are other things you could also do with Canva. I can go into the apps and I can go into text to image. And in text to image, I can type in what I want. Now it sounds really crazy. I'm gonna put in penguin 
Um, and I'm going to put in artificial intelligence. I have no idea what's going to come up, but nothing much if I don't spell this correctly. Okay. Penguin artificial intelligence. No idea. Let's see what image Canva creates for me. Literally is creating it right now. It's not searching the internet. It's not finding a picture. It's giving me penguin artificial intelligence. Now, I doesn't quite look like artificial intelligence to me. Again, maybe my search terms weren't so good. Again, another learning lesson for your students. So what can I do? Artificial intelligence penguin. How about we put quotation marks around artificial intelligence and let's create again and let's see what happens. Again, it's going through the magic. It's, oh, it's really, th oh, now it's really thinking. And again, I don't see anything with artificial intelligence. So what else can I do? How about penguin and I type in robot. Again, I don't know what's going to happen. This is a really good lesson when your kids are getting the right search terms, getting exactly what they need. They're going to keep asking for more. Here we go. Penguin robot. Again, it's artificial intelligence. It's learning what I want. The more times I work on it, the more it's going to learn. So I don't think it's a quite artificial intelligence. This looks like a really weird penguin. So does this one. But I can put in, I'm going to put in um, something else that might be easier for the computer. Uh, penguin and a red truck. And maybe that it would understand. Maybe that it would understand better than penguin artificial intelligence. Again, artificial intelligence is only as good as the user. It's only as good as the person using it. So I don't see any penguins in this picture. So how about we have penguin driving? User error, right? My husband's a mechanic and he says most things uh, are user error. Yes, cars break down all the time, but it's user error. So now, hey, now we've got our penguin in a red truck. Again, it shows the kids you have to be very, very specific. Specific with your language, specific with your questions. I get all the time from kids, oh, can I have that thing over there? Oh, you know that, that, you know that stuff I was talking about. They use the words like things, stuff, and then don't give those details. This really pushes them to use those details. <clears throat> and as you're going through, you can choose different styles. So vibrant, minimalist, 3D. I don't know. Let's try the retro and we'll do create again. I have no idea what's going to happen. We'll see what happens. Let's see what happens, a little text to image. Okay, we have our red truck. I don't see our penguin in here. He might be in the back seat, I don't know. But again, it's got that nice retro style. All right, so that is something else, another way you can use um, artificial intelligence in your Canva. Then I'm gonna show you uh, the Canva docs. So if I go to docs right here, Canva docs, Go into Docs, which I absolutely love, and I can start typing. This uh, session is about artificial intelligence. Okay, great. Fantastic. All right, Chris, where's the artificial intelligence? Okay, it's the plus sign right here. So I can add a design, I can add a heading, a checklist, all these different things I can add to my doc very easily, but it's that magic right that we want, the magic right. So if I click magic right, again, it's going to ask me those words, just like magic design, it's going to ask me words here. So I'm going to talk about um, uh, the benefits of using Canva in the classroom. Okay, I'm doing things, this is off the top of my head, I have no idea what's going to say. All right, Grammarly, that's Grammarly. That's another artificial intelligence right there. Let me move that Grammarly over. No idea. Benefits of using Canva in the classroom. Here we go. I have no idea. Look at that. Canva is a powerful and user-friendly graphic design tool that can be used in the classroom to create visually appealing and engaging materials. And here are some of the benefits. 
improve student engagement, enhance creativity, time saving, accessible for all, and collaboration. It says right here, generate with AI using Canva.com Magic Write. And the technology is new and improving. So the more that you use this, the more that you use the text to image, the more that you use the magic design, the more your, your Canva is going to actually start learning what you're looking for. And actually the users, the students, you will start learning, how do I need to speak in order for the computer to understand what I'm saying? And that's a very important tool, having kids describe and put words to their feelings and words to their thoughts. It's very, very, it's a difficult idea, um, especially for littles, um, but it, it's it, this will help them improve their own writing because as they're formulating the questions and they're getting feedback on the better questions and the better uh, words and the search terms they put in, uh, the, the better um, the, uh, the output's going to be from Canva. And again, here's your plus sign and your magic right before. And I can search for anything. I'm just going to search for, I'm going to search for penguins here. I have no idea what's going to happen with penguins if I do this. Oh, and here's my image. Let's say my little emoji. All right. So you can use uh, this. It, it, it's almost like a chat GBT, but it's actually already in your Canva. And don't forget, Canva is in your book creator. So it's like one of those uh, those nesting dolls. I'm Ukrainian. So those dolls that open one inside the other. So you've got like AI in your Canva in your book creator. And then you've got the drawing in your book creator. And then you've got the text to image in your Canva. And all of them can work together simultaneously. And the kids can learn about AI, not just as some hypothetical idea, not as something that um, is scary, uh, not something that is very, very techie based. They can see how it works in reality and how it, you know, and how they are part of the AI experience. The AI really means nothing until the user tells AI what to do. So here we go. Uh, I've used this for um, maybe writing proposals, writing course descriptions. I like it because I, instead of having a, a blank screen, I have something on my, my, in my paper on my screen that I can individualize for myself. And that's another thing to teach your students. AI may be giving you the beginning and maybe giving you ideas, but it's the voice that you bring to it that makes it so individual and so much uh, of your own. So again, the six ways to introduce your students. I'm going to go to the beginning because this is uh, my Canva presentation. Um, you have your which face is real, so it's really fun to decide which face is real. And then they let the kids discover how uh, how to determine whether a, a photo is AI generated or is it real. Um, you have your interplay mode where you can use YouTube in, embedded here to learn about spelling, uh, how to write in Japanese, and how to write in Hebrew. Uh, you have your animated drawings. You might even want to draw something in Canva. Canva has a drawing tool. You could draw something in Canva, and then you could download that and take, take uh, put a transparent background and animate that, and then throw it back into Canva. So you could use animated drawings both ways. Uh, you have your teachable machine. Again, your it's not complete coding, but it does require a little more finesse. And I would say this is for more your older kids. And then you've got your book creator, which is so easy. The kids can just draw. And then it, it, again, it could make your those pictures become um, real pictures or little clip art pictures. And then you have all of those ideas in Canva. And there is actually one more idea in Canva that I'll show you about. If I go to apps, um, you have something called D, uh, I, B. No, it's not. Oh, maybe it's down here. No. Or is it D, D, I? I'm trying to remember what it was. I'm trying to find, um, there is a, where you can make your own images talk just like we did in the, in our ads. And I'm looking for it in here. It's supposed to be embedded in here. Um, Amanda or Erica, do you have it is? It's did D I D. Oh, just D I D. Okay. Yeah. D dash I D. 
It might be DJ. Oh, you know Maybe I have to be at a presentation. Do you think that's true? I've never. I was in a document. I thought maybe that would be that would work. Know. It should show up. It's very strange. DID. Oh, there we go. Yes. There we go. Thank you. And so that is how um, I made that picture speak. So you can connect the DID AI presenters. Um, and I actually went, I made one with Edgar Allan Poe. I went into Canva, used a text to image, got an image of Edgar Allan Poe, threw mm -hmm. it into DID, made it talk, and then put it back into Canva and give it a background and everything. So Lots of fun things you can do at Canva, oh, Creator, and all these other websites. We've been using pictures of my dad when he was younger, and he's having fun with that. You know, um, making these old pictures come to life. You know what he would what he would have looked like talking at that age. Oh, I <laughs> love that. Yeah, it's very cool. And sure. if you guys saw the Hello History, so if you use Hello History um, dot AI to model what these talking characters look like, you can have them make their own, peruse the collection and find one that they'd want to see in the collection and, and actually create their own. And if you haven't looked at um, chat DID, they, they actually have a GPT-3 uh, wow. integrated chat bot that actually talks at you and answers questions versus um, in text form. So it's pretty, cool. pretty amazing. Very yeah. Very cool. That's very cool. Uh, yeah, and, and they're further categorized. They have... Um, Theology, uh, philosophy, mathematics, history, literary. Um, oh, education. Wow. Yeah. And th then the for education. Yeah. That's wild. I just looked it up. That's amazing. Gosh, so many tools. Wow. That is so it's much it, fun. I have to try that out. All the tools we learned. <laughs> I think and um, John's working on a in the resource guide that you get if you registered for Week of AI. The resource guide will be going out at some point next week. I'm collecting resources from our presenters this week to put in with some sort of takeaway, something for you to take away and try and implement with instructions or a template or a lesson plan. So make sure you register at teachergoals.com forward slash AI dash week if you did not. So that way. Um, you'll get a the conference guide complete with the replays linked all in to everybody's session. And then there will be that conference uh, resource pack that's coming later. So great. Yeah. Ooh, I can't wait for that. that. <laughs> love it it I want a, that. It was a lot. A so, presenters, if you're watching, give me your resources. People want them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You want to pop your screen down and we can. Chit chat. Or, or, oh, where are you? Are you done with the presentation? Are you still I going? Am done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my lights just went out. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank yeah. you for um, the wonderful six tips. Uh, everything that wonderful. you went through. I knew Book Creator hadn't been covered yet, so that was a wonderful yeah, addition. That one and that other one too was really cool. It was. I was playing with it, trying to figure right. it out. Yeah. And they're well, so that's, simple. That's what oh, we do. Like while you guys are presenting, we're in here putting the links into the tabs and pulling it up and playing. <laughs> so. Yeah, I've been playing the whole time. I, I, I have more bookmarks <laughs> than I've ever had yeah. taken before. Absolutely. All these people saying yes. thank you. Awesome job. Oh, you're welcome. John Wick and Elena and Francis. This is great. Wonderful. Absolutely. I yeah, love it. Fun stuff. And don't forget to uh, take screenshots and um, or even video or anything and share your takeaways and tag everybody, uh, including a week of AI and teacher goals. So um, you can be in a drawing to win a book, but also to get this out there because these replays will be available. And uh, I'm just so excited for teachers to to dive in and have have a, a place to start and get excited about it and change their mind about it. I definitely, Absolutely. I definitely know a lot of teachers that have been watching that have, they've just changed their mind very quickly. So. I just and love watching the creativity and innovation of teachers. Mm -hmm. You give them something and they're just going to make something better out of it. Exactly. And it's just like, wow, how'd you even think of that? The use cases. Yeah. yeah. The use cases. Because we could see the same tool three times in three different presentations being used three different ways. Right. So, yeah. Exactly. Um, that's what's so fun too, is this, this party isn't over, right, Amanda? 
we're no. gonna going and i mean we might take a break tonight <laughs> i might sleep or she might sleep but um we're definitely going to have a lot of follow-up with this and and carry the conversations on and also share our our wins and our creativity with each other with all these tools i mean let's just have some absolutely fun. <laughs> and um i've got some exciting news dan fitzpatrick is stateside He's the, one of the yeah. co-authors of the AI Classroom. So contact us for professional development opportunities this summer. Add your school to our summer road tour in July. Um, you can book us now. Um, you can go and book, inquire through the website, teachergoals.com, um, or email you know me directly at amanda at teachergoals.com. He's here. We're we're going to be later late July, like touring around and and going to different schools, providing um, on demand PD. So uh, yeah, keep the let's keep this going, and take advantage of him being in the United States because as we jump from city to city, it will be a lot uh, more economical for you to get him here versus you know trying to get him here from the UK just for your school. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah always and- but the saving pot. money is a good thing. Yeah. And again, thanks, thanks to Canva. And as really, <laughs> as really quick, let's say three is my favorite F word. I think football oh. is first. It, it's may, maybe it's, is it football? No. Uh, so uh, if you watch Ted Lasso, <laughs> my favorite characters, and Canva is free for educators. So thank you, Canva, for um, for today's session and um, sponsoring today, all of Friday's episodes. Yes. Thank we you, love Canva. Canva. We're all a little obsessed. Yes. <laughs> Just a little. Canva love. Canva love is real. Yes. All right. But, so, yeah. I'm sorry. I just love how Canva plays with a lot of uh, everybody else too. So it's, it's great. It, it <laughs> does. And it doesn't I'm matter. Up in things. I was in, um, what was I in? A- Eventbrite. Did you know that's Canva in Eventbrite? I did not. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You go into Ventbrite to set up what you want. Wow. And it canvas already in there. That's so cool. Like it's it's like in the it's like behind the scenes going, Hi, I'm here to help you. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> and, awesome. and you can I'm print directly to Staples now, I believe. They've got a partnership with either Staples or Office Depot. Oh maybe both. Who knows? So um Let's see. We've got some giveaways. With some prizes. We got some prizes. prizes. So number one, if you're watching, I want to go ahead and give everybody a six month subscription to Curapod. So six months free. If you're watching, all you have to do, and I'm putting it in the chat, six months free of Curapod. Very kind, Brenda. Use um use week not don't use the hashtag. It's just just week of AI. Just week of AI is the promo code. So if you use week of AI, you get six months for free. All premium features. I should take you through summer to give you time to play and the first three months of school to get it going. And um, I'm certain you'll you'll find the value and the worth. And uh, they also have an amazing accelerator program for schools to where if you get a school license, you get six free PD sessions. Wow. So it is, it is, that alone is worth it. And uh, they're, they're from Norway. They're going to be here in the fall. They're going to actually be jumping around to the schools and doing in-person PD. That's so cool. If you're part of their accelerator program. So check them out. Um, and we're just going to take a quick look at Twitter. I want to see what people are saying. Okay. You need help? <laughs> I got it. You got it. I got it. So I filtered by week of AI. We're just going to refresh this really quick. Let's see what everyone's saying. So Jonathan Nalder shared his um, his session here. We've got Christina's. So if you search week of AI, you can go through and find out what everyone's saying, their takeaways. Here we are. <laughs> life, their spawns. I don't know where I'm looking there. Um, I know half my faces are so. Like, <laughs> all of all of the lives are posted. They will live here. They will live on um, Facebook. They will live on LinkedIn, and they will live on YouTube. We've got um, this amazing um, screenshot from Tanya. Tanya was all over today with posting. Uh, 
Oh, oh love teacher. Fun. I think she was curating all of your tools, Erica. No, I know. And I didn't even I didn't even finish sharing them all. I ran out of time. Uh, had then <laughs> we had some amazing posts. We got Google Bard here from Eric Session. Um, Dr. Thomas Ho, he was amazing. He was tweeting a lot yesterday on all of the tools, retweeting everything to his network. We had on Eric Kurtz. So just it's it's a nice it's kind of nice to go back through and recap Bonnie, um, Jonathan again, and um, we had some amazing trying to find ooh, where is the shirts that were made? I don't know. That was I know. There's oh here we go. Here's one, Angela Plank. Um, she took John's design from Monday and um, created her own uh, avatar in Mid Journey and popped it in. And then Amy said she's more of a Disney girl than a Harry Potter fan. So here's her her Disney text to, uh, image generated. And she she also Amy also made where's Amy's up oh, John Wick playing with seeds. So just playing around <laughs> with getting getting uh, trying to get people uh, to age and kind of maintain some consistency throughout the character design. And then this is Amy Thornton. So Amy, Tanya, and Angela, we have Canva gift vouchers for you. We have three $25 Canva gift vouchers that we're going to give away. And next, if you bought a, my dogs are about to go crazy. I think, it's about, I think one of my children returned home. So she's got a lot of them. They're so cute. My husband took the kids out. I want to play <laughs> video games. That's why it's quiet. Otherwise, forget it. <laughs> yeah, um, so next we've got uh, we've got giveaways. We've got 30 books and an hour PD. We've got a couple single books that we're giving away and two more print vouchers. And these for the these are for those that participated in um, buying a you know sure. week of AI shirt. And what I'm going to do next is we are going to go to that wheel. I'm going to add in all of their names. So yeah. if you bought a shirt, your name is in. So the first prize. <laughs> I get so excited. The I know, we're not winning, Erica. I know, but I still get excited for other people. <laughs> all right. That's such a surprise. It doesn't matter who gets it. Print voucher. This is for a $24 print voucher. The winner is Gina Parker. Gina. I got to I got to go back over so we can see the name in full. Okay, the next is for an um a single copy. Erica, could you write these down for me? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, cuz I don't want to have to go back and rewatch <laughs> To figure out where is this going where what was that first all right gina, gina parker, parker. Got it. Well, I'm I'm really her. Her. i have a computer <laughs> okay. i just write in the air right in the ai I'm laughing because i i can type it I'm this is for a copy a copy of the ai classroom angela nice. plank you get a sign oh, angela the AI classroom. <laughs> she's psyched I'm gonna all oh. right Next is another $25 Canva print voucher. Nice. Spin, spin, spin. Everybody wins. Oof. Yay! Dan Huang Kyun. Um, my yes. pronunciation, I'm certain, is off. My apologies. Um, but $25 print voucher. Perfect. Yes. And um, we've got another signed copy of the AI classroom. Oh, I meant to remove her last time. She she already won. So hold on. All right. Yeah. Spread the wealth. Spread the wealth. Oh, Tyler. Tyler King. Tyler King. All right. 
for? Now this one's for the big prize. Oh boy, everybody's shaking their faces. All right, big prize. This is for 30 copies of the AI classroom for your wow. school and an hour wow. of PD. Wow. <laughs> Virtual PD, not in person. Sorry. <laughs> And wow, Eileen Wallace, congratulations! Eileen wow. Wallace, who I believe is in Scotland. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so that's going to be fun working with those time zones. But yeah, she has been a doll. She stayed up, um, and she's been participating even with time zones. And this week of AI, she's like, oh, you know, I can sleep next week. So I'm I'm excited. And she she was actually a contributor to the book. She wrote a section oh, on, and she was, she wrote a section on CurePod and oh, how nice. she's using CurePod. So awesome. That's fantastic. Oh my gosh. Yay. Meant to be. Yeah. Wow. So, um, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. It's been exciting. Um, there's two more things I want to share. One is um, bedtime stories for kids or stories for kids. Let's see. Bedtime stories.ai at storiesforkids.ai. Um, so this is a cool tool because you can go in and create a story or a poem. You can, and I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I have some pre-generated ones because it can take a minute. Um, but you put in the main character's name, you put in their interest, um, describe the, you know, what the kid looks like. And then you give some sort of moral of the story. You name it, and then you write a story or a poem. So um, an example was my son's name is Finnick. So, and he likes video games, and um, he gets really frustrated, and he wants to quit when he, when he can't beat a level. So the moral of the story was supposed to be, you know, if what was the moral of the story? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did this in March. The moral of the story is this girl has four children <laughs> and worked full time and pulled all this together. I'm surprised you need to be English. determined and never give up. With hard work and determination, you can do anything. So, um, it kind of uses the same character throughout. Aww. And my idea was, um, my kids they have Star Student of the Week. Or a star student. Yeah, star student of the week. So if you have star student of the week, it would be fun um, during their day to have them either generate a story about them with their interests, with, you know, something, um, a moral of something that you could help teach them, you know, to overcome, like, uh, and or or as a group, as a class, you could come up with however many students what they want to work on that year. And you can fold that into the storytelling. And then when it becomes their star student, you know, their week, you read their story to the class that's personalized for them. And it becomes part of that uh, that class culture where we're generating stories. They're, they're, they, they look forward to the story that's about them. And then you, you can print them out. You could even um, like cut, copy and paste these into a book creator and create a shelf with the stories mm. for the student. So uh, it's cool. There is a freemium, um, but if you buy it for one month, if you spend a month kind of getting, figuring out your students, getting to know them, learning their hobbies, um, learning, you know, putting their descriptions down, um, coming up with the moral, naming it, and you generate, you, you get the monthly uh, package, you generate one for each kid and you have your stories for the year. So, and it's it's just fun. I think parents would like it, and it would be a great way to to that. use AI to get kids excited about about literacy and about reading stories mm -hmm. that are about them. And um, it takes a lot of the writing off of the teacher when you have thirty students in your class. You can't, you know, we don't always have time to sit down and write thirty unique stories or poems about our students. So mm -hmm. this is something that's fun, and it actually generates the images here. I did that's one for Fawn's. I was trying to get it up the other day. <laughs> I did one for Fonz's week of AI session. Fonz is brave and bold. I did the poem. He loves to explore new tech tools to hold. He's curious about AI oop, and ed tech, and he wants to try something new. What a great feat. So it's, sometimes the rhymes off. You, you can actually edit the stories too. Um, he starts with Adobe Firefly, a tool that helps the students learn with glee. 
He tries it out and finds it's a hit. His students love the way it makes them think. So Fonz has learned a lesson to share that trying new tech tools can be quite a dare. And then as you go down, you can mix it up. You can um, you can build on the story. You can share it, rate it, save it. And um, when you share it, you get um, ref you can refer parents. Parents can use it at home. But it's awesome. it's a fun it's a little fun tool, and it's it's in the AI classroom book. But I just love it. Um, my kids loved it. We went through and made one for each of our each of our kids. And then um, the exciting thing is Artie Bot is coming soon. This is just a, um, a Canva stockholder play, you know, um, none of it was written by chat GPT and none of it's illustrated by text to image generators. It will be, um, Trisha Fugelstad's actually gonna, I hope she's still planning on illustrating, um, already bought. I've asked her to, uh, so hopefully she'll uh, <laughs> be the illustrator and she's got Peter and meter coming out and Artie will kind of live in Peter's universe. It'll be a universe of robots. So excited about that. And I just wanted to drop in the chat. Um, if you wanted to do a beta read of the book or, and give me feedback, um, I'm looking for people to give, you know, beta readers to give feedback. I'm putting that link in the chat. Um, join my launch team. Um, the book will be out in the fall, hopefully. So it's about a little AI robot who um, who goes to school with humans. And, you know, there's it, it frames the whole debate on 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 AI and education on should we be using it? How can we, we how can we be using it? How are robots are trained? How are the bots trained? And um, it covers plagiarism. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Congratulations to our winners. Yes. Congrats. Yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I'm so excited. Winner than chicken dinner. I, I know. <laughs> I think I'm just. <laughs> um, oh, I can't. <laughs> okay. I, guys, I think that's it. We're at 902. We've given stuff away. We've done 22 hours of AIPD this week mm -hmm. from 22. Um, thought leaders in education and in the AI space. I hope you took something away. Thank you for tuning in to one, two, five, or all. Um, catch the others on the replay and go to Twitter. Tell us what you think about this week, yes. what you want to see more of, whose sessions you loved, what tools you adore, what you're running out to integrate in your classrooms tomorrow. Yes, and share away and tag us and tag week of AI and teacher goals. We'd love to see it. And we're so excited for this party to continue. So yes, yes. It started. way to go. And I want to thank Amanda Fox for creating this beautiful events and uh, asking me to, to help her um, drive the ship. So this was all her, this was all her creation and her beautiful uh, mind that you all have seen working here well, even though she didn't do a formal presentation she certainly did she put this together <laughs> it, it would not have been possible and honestly this was an accident guys this was not supposed to be the grand week of ai that it became it was supposed to be a presentation one day a week but i had 22 amazing people who all said yes and <laughs> I, it became something bigger and I'm so proud of everyone, how everyone came together. Um, Brad and Elena behind the scenes um, doing, you know, every email that you've gotten has come from Elena. Um, Brad's managing the social media, making sure people are aware of this week, getting it out. Um, I've, I've been the, the scheduling person and, and, and Erica, my wonderful co-host, I, I couldn't have done it without you. Oh, thank you. I, so. I had a lot of fun. I, uh, I've had this experience before, so I know <laughs> just a what, little, <laughs> I know what you needed behind the scenes. That's for sure. And thank you to all of our sponsors. Thank you. Um, Canva. Thank you. Conquer. Thank you. Eduade. Thank you. Schemely. And thank you. Curapod. Um, we appreciate your contributions as well and coming in, um, giving a session and then, uh, also, providing vouchers and other other things for the can you send me the links it is not sharing terry the link to oh you're on linkedin that's why okay yes i 
I can send you the link directly. If you just um, connect with me on LinkedIn, if you're interested and you're not getting the link on LinkedIn, our comments, we see your comments here, but our comments don't go out to you. So don't think we've ever ignored you on LinkedIn. We just can't be in 25 places at once as <laughs> much as we try. <laughs> so um, yes, any of my LinkedIn peeps, if you're watching, if you, if you need something, if you need a link, connect with me directly, send me a DM and anything that you ask for, I will try to get back with you in 24 hours and make sure you have those resources at your disposal. But again, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, any, any last words like, before this week ends? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just saying you could add your already bought and all that to your booklet possibly too, but we can talk. Yes. About I will add already bought to the resource. No, guys. One, one stop shop booklet. This booklet's amazing. So definitely register at Teacher Goals so you can get and your copy. And it is get happy the hour now at the Fox House. <laughs> All right. It is. It is there. We are there. I can't. It's, it's like a blur. It's just, what? It's over. I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you. I know. What are we going to do with our time each I, night? I don't, I don't know. Let's call you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Same bat time, same bat channel. I will call you tomorrow. We need like an after party Zoom, like where yeah, people can come in and it's like an informal like hangout. <laughs> yes. All right. But no, we will we're gonna, gonna, we'll be at ISTE. We'll see you at ISTE. We, we will be at yeah, ISTE we'll at, the, at, the at, real, at the real after hour parties. So Ed Tech Karaoke, um, I'm going to be at Chris's Jazz Cafe, I believe that Monday. I am sitting on a We Video uh, panel discussing video and education. Um, Erica, you're at the We Video booth. Um, I will be there streaming from there. Um, I'm in Book Creator. I'm in Conquer. I'm in Curapod. And you can catch me in Canva. So nice. hopefully. I'm in, Canva's I'm not in three playgrounds, too. So we're all, we're all really going to be everywhere <laughs> oh yeah and the actual isd presentations so oh, yeah, yeah we, we have, have coming out presentations. Um, <laughs> yeah so keep in touch follow us on social i'm at amanda fox stem um uh, i'm gonna remove the screen so you guys can see she's at l-i-e barian lie barian yep i like it i like it <laughs> um and then I'm at Amanda Fox Stem and Erica's at Green Screen Gal. So stay in touch, stay in the loop. Tell us how you're using AI. And um, the next event hopefully will be in person somewhere soon. And um, if you're interested in ever coming on writing blogs for Teacher Goals, send us a message as well because we want to highlight your voices. And have a good Friday. Happy Friday. Friday. Happy Friday. Namaste, everybody. Thank you.